Hi, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to our webinar. Wonderful. All right. Well, we let everybody kind of come on in and set up your screen, your audio. Um, I'm going to do this. And David, just give me a thumbs up if the screen share is working correctly. Yep. Okay, wonderful. Um, so I want to thank everybody who has joined us um, on this summer program's webinar. Um, my name is Jenna. I work for Tel Aviv University International out of our US office. Um, and we are joined today for this webinar by several folks from Tel Aviv University International around the world. Um, so I'm gonna do a brief introduction. Um, first, I would like to introduce David Ryan, who is my counterpart on campus in Israel and has done a lot to help set up this webinar. So David is here. He's, um, you'll see contact information for us at the end of the presentation and you can reach out to either of us if you have any questions later on. Feel free to con uh, communicate with David in the chat while this is happening if you have any questions. Um, next. Uh, we have, forgive me, did I just exit full screen mode, David? You, um, you exited I the did. presentation mode. The presentation mode. There yeah. we go. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> um, so, forgive me. Andre Husid is with us as well. He is our Brazilian representative for the Latin American region, um, and we are grateful to have him here not only as a representative of TAU International, um, but also as an alum of one of the courses we're going to be presenting to you today. Um, so forgive me, because unfortunately without the, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen because sure. um, without the presentation, I don't have my notes for some of these <laughs> things. Um, so, okay, sorry, forgive me. Next, we have, um, I want to introduce Dan Rabinowitz, who is joining us today to be talking, he'll be talking about um, our climate change in the Middle East course. He's a professor at the university, a lecturer in the Department of Sociology and Anthropology um, and the School of Society and Policy. So we're really grateful to have Professor Rabinowitz with us today to talk about that online course. Um, we also are joined by Enav Levy, who's the founding director of the Israeli School of Humanitarian Action and a faculty member um, in the Master of Disaster uh, and Management in P at PAU. So he is going to be talking, uh, talking to us about the online course we're offering this summer called COVID-19 from Crisis to Opportunity. Um, so that, thank you Enav for joining us as well. Um, and I also just want to introduce quickly um, somebody who is joining us in the, the panelist deck, you should be able to see, um, Itzik, who is our head of student life on campus. We just wanted to have him join us. You could see a face, one of the faces that will be on campus greeting you if you join us for a, a course that's taking place in person. So um, I am going to go back to share my screen now. And, um, just briefly be, before we let um, folks present, I want to quickly give you a little bit of context about the university and TAU International. Um, we are essentially the arm of the university that operates and oversees all of the programming available to overseas students instructed in English. And that's everything you see at the bottom of my screen. So study abroad programs. We have full degree programs at the undergraduate and graduate level, as well as postdoctoral programs, um, short-term pro programs, which we're gonna be talking about today, our summer programs. So there's a lot available. Um, but today, like I said, we're gonna be talking about summer. Um, just quickly, the university is a pretty big place. There's about 30,000 students on campus every year. About 2,000 of them are international students studying in English. Um, at 125 schools and departments across nine faculties, students join us from over 100 countries all over the world. So it's a pretty dynamic place to be. Um, 
there's a lot going on, a lot of activity, a lot of energy, and we hope that you'll get the chance to join us for one or some of them. Um, like I said, in English, we offer over 60 programs. We're going to be talking today about some of the over 15 summer programs that we run on a short term basis. Um, so first, uh, we are going to be hearing from, uh, sorry, this is just a list. I'm going to go back in the presentation at the end. But first, we are going to be hearing um, about our COVID-19 from crisis to opportunity course. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, Anav is going to be introducing or talking to us about this. Um, so I don't know, David, if there's anything else you want to mention about Anav uh, before we let him take it over. Um, no, I think you mentioned everything. We know that Anav is the founding director and also a faculty member of the master's degree that we offer in emergency and disaster management. Um, so delighted to have you here with us, Inav, and um, the, the floor is yours. Thank you, guys. Um, bear with me before I'm sharing. I want to see you all. Why can't I see you all? Um, so hi, uh, it's a pleasure, and thank you for the opportunity. I'm sorry if uh, actually it's a new webcam, so if I'm looking like I'm a kind of in captivity, I do apologize. Um, I will start with, uh, with, a short, uh, with a short and a bit relevant story. About three weeks ago, I flew over from, from Israel to a Southern American country where I was managing some, some small humanitarian mission. And, and, and maybe as some of you already know, in Israel, uh, most of us are vaccinated and we are allowed to take off the face mask and so forth. And when we flew over, um, throughout the path in the connection in Europe and, and as well in South, uh, South America, the COVID, as you know, is still there with the lockdowns, with the problem of vaccinations, with the face mix and so forth. And it struck me as, as it always does when you can see how the same events or the same situations affect or being affected differently subject to the context, subject to the setting, subject to the, to the culture maybe. And actually this is what is this course about, about how different issues, subjects and domains are working or not working, working um, through interconnectivity um, in a way that being affecting and being affected by the COVID-19. And I will start with being more specific as it comes to the course itself. So I'm sharing my screen and I'm sure you can all see it. So um, generally this course is based on a course that we had last year. Last year was, I think all the world was about three or four months after the COVID started. And in that course, we tried to analyze the first, um, the first issues that were affected by the COVID-19 what are the challenges? What are the questions? What are the difficulties? And what can we do as practitioners, as managers? What can we, can we do about it? And to try to look forward to, to seek for the opportunities. And when we were trying to develop, and as we develop this course, the course that you're about to hear about, uh, um, we are looking uh, 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 into the future in a more uh, broader way. We know already, passed on based on the last year, that there are things that we've learned. There are things that could be and should be better. There are things that uh, suddenly, both at the, at the personal level, at the society level, at the at, at a national level, and in the global level, things struck us and taught us many things about ourselves and about the relationships and the uh, interdisciplinarity between different issues and sectors. And this is what we are looking at on how we can learn and improve our abilities in understanding and being better prepared for the future because reality, you know, it will hit us again. Basically, this is the, these are the objectives of the course. Uh, anyone, by the way, wants to read instead of you hear my voice? Someone from the, um, from the guy that just joined us who wants to read? Who is the volunteer who wants to read for us? Go ahead, who is the brave one? No, no. <laughs> No one is the, uh, yes, Yutinga, I think, go ahead. No, go ahead. 
Which which one is it? I need to give them uh, permission to talk. I, I just saw someone who raised the hand. Um, oh. uh, no one wants to. So you hear my voice? No problem. So we are facing three objectives. The first one is that we will all try to define the impact of the COVID, right, on several aspects, focusing and trying to seek for the resilient component into uh, this impact. The second objective would be that we try to analyze more of the national level of the response. And the third objective would be we'll try to apply these a different understandings and different multidisciplinary aspects in order to improve our ability to manage the future in order to, to, to strengthen uh, and empower our own resilience, both at the, at the individual level and, of course, at the national and global level. The course itself, if I may say, it will require a, an effort from you guys. It is Beside the fact that it is intense, it is very um, engaging. And you will be really engaged and work throughout this course. It will be hybrid. It will be interactive. You'll get some assignments between the, the different meetings. You read a little bit. There are several quizzes. Um, and we will really encourage you to take an active participation in the course, not only as listeners, or students, but more of future practitioners. And we believe that it will give you the option to think in a broader way rather than just being passive. This is generally the structure of the course. So we are looking at about, about not about six weeks, of course. Uh, you can see the dates and you can see briefly the, the list of the topics. So we will use these topics to try to understand how these topics were affected and were affected by the COVID. So we have the medical issues, we have the economical issues, political education systems, technological issues, and, and you can see uh, the whole list. And in between, you can see that you will have the opportunity to share your thoughts, your insights, your criticism about several aspects that were you face within your countries or things that you were observing as global citizens, as students, as individuals, when we all were looking into this era of the human being that I believe that it was a, a really good and important lesson for all of us as, as a, um, in, in several levels. Before I move into a, a short uh, video of about 87 minutes, uh, I will do this. Bear with me. How do I do this? Wait, 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 wait. Okay. And I will show you the best movie you were. Let me check if you could see it on my screen as well. You won't believe how low tech I am and how proud I am of <laughs> managing to, okay. So I'm going to share the screen. There you go. And COVID-19, or shall I just call you Corona? Wait, there you go. You showed up out of nowhere, and now, well, you're everywhere. You forced us to stop everything, and despite your impact on our daily lives, you remain strong. Want to know why? Because when crisis comes knocking, some of us become our most creative, wise, and tenacious selves. Crisis is the best teacher. It teaches us resilience and agility to find a new way to move forward and lead in ways we may not have previously considered. In the nonstop city of Tel Aviv, at the heart of the startup nation, the search for answers to ever evolving problems is our strength. We invite you to join our leading experts at Tel Aviv University to discover a multifaceted course that will challenge you with diverse perspectives on how to cope with all kinds of crisis in areas of health, economics, education, risk communication, and more. Join us in our online course, From Crisis to Opportunity, 
so that we can embrace and overcome the challenges of tomorrow together. Ta-da! Yeah, that's it. Um, no, not the next movie. Ha! You almost almost were witnessing the the one of those guys were talking in the parliament in Israel. This is really it's really bad. It's like a whole disaster. Um, that's it, guys. If you have okay. any questions, please go ahead. Um, join us. It's going to be interesting and challenging. And I think that it will give all of us, including ourselves, the, the, the lecturers and the staff, a, an important opportunity to look and to explore things that are beyond the immediate observation. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Dr. Levy. Um, I thought I'll just pop in the chat as well to everyone a, a link to that, to that YouTube video and that they're welcome to then watch in um, in their own free time as well. I'd like to introduce Andre, who's an alum from the COVID-19 From Crisis to Opportunity program from 2020. Um, he did it last summer. So I'd like to invite Andre. Andre, would you like to say a few words about your experience on the program, what you got out of it, what was the yeah. best part about it? No, of course, it would be my pleasure. So good morning, good afternoon, Good evening, everyone. I'm speaking from noon time in Sao Paulo, Brazil. I'm Brazilian. And, uh, sorry for the barking. So, uh, yeah, I took the program last year, uh, the online program from Crisis Opportunity. It was a very tight, well prepared program, very well managed by Dr. Levy, by Dr. Julia Didi, by Noah, the student assistant. Uh, so, I felt very um, very well led through the process of the, of the program. It was an international virtual classroom. So with people from all over the world who maybe if it was in campus wouldn't be able to be there. So we, we were around 30 to 40 students from every corner, from every continent. So it was very interesting to hear the different experiences that each one was living under the pandemic at that time, July last year. Uh, so that we could compare and we could discuss the bad, the, the good and the bad practices that each of our countries were um, were putting up at the time, and beside that that uh, possibility of sharing and discussing with our colleagues, we had that amazing classes by specialists in multiple fields, as Dr. Levy just just explained the, the structure of the program from disaster management to infectology legal and ethics, economics and technology, but all of it focusing on the issue of COVID-19. So everything wrapped well together from, from beginning to end. The program uh, had very interesting readings that we had to, to, to do to each of the classes, but also very engaging assignments. So it was uh, not only uh, from crisis to opportunity, from, but from theory to practice. That, that's what I felt from the program. It was uh, a good balance of theory and practice. A lot of group work, so every class we had, I don't know, maybe 40 to 45 minutes of, of theory or PowerPoint, and then it was group work. So it was very exciting as well because, you know, Zoom has this feature of, of breakout rooms. Each, each class, I would go into a breakout room with different people who maybe I haven't met before. So it was a very good opportunity to, you know, to at least once speak to, to every participant of the program. Um, so that was very nice as well. And we had a very interesting final assignment. I don't know how it's going to be in this year as things developed so much from one year from now, but we had to, to put out the shoes of a government advisor from our country and prepare a readiness plan for a second wave of COVID, which by the time was, was the thing, right? Now in Brazil, we're going to the third one, but back then we weren't into the, the second yet. So we had to prepare a readiness plan so it was a very uh, realistic way of, of wrapping up and closing the program. And I found it very interesting to bring all the, th the theory and all the group work and bring to um, that very uh, practical way of, of approaching. So I think this year, the program was going to be very, very interesting because things have evolved a lot since July last year. Israel is already in the post-COVID age, maybe. Uh, many other countries aren't. So I think there's going to be interesting experience to be shared from countries that are already leaving the, the Corona age, uh, as it seems right now, and others that aren't. 
So the, the exchange of good and bad and bad practices is going to be even more based on, on, on reality. Uh, and I think there's a lot to learn about from, from each other at, and where we stand on in time right now. So definitely I learned a lot about, uh, about COVID during the program. And I felt that I was able to, you know, um, to drift by the fake news age that we are on and television and, you know, very shallow news and information that we get from everywhere and really get in that insights about COVID and be able to, you know, navigate this crazy dystopic reality we are all living in, in a more um, secure way, feeling that I, I have the, the tools and appropriate um, theories to, to understand what's going on. So that's it, guys. I really, really recommend uh, participating in the program. Uh, it's really interesting. It's really well put together. And I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. So hoping that this uh, brief feedback was helpful. And if you have any other questions about my experience, I'm free to assist you. Thank you. You're joining the marketing efforts of the course, I can see, Andre. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's part of the job. <laughs> Thank you so much, Andre. I was just going to say, have you signed up for this year's program as well? I hope. <laughs> this year, I'm actually going to take Professor Dan Rabinovich's program. Oh, so, excellent. Yeah, I'm, oh, I'm making a tour from, from all the online program that Tel Aviv University is offering so they can Wonderful. give you guys more, more feedback afterwards. We'll be Wonderful. happy to have you, Andre. It will be a pleasure, Professor Davinovitz. Wonderful. Thank you, Andre. Um, so yes, I'd like to introduce our next speaker. We have Professor Dan Rabi, uh, Rabinovich, the um, program head of our new online program, Climate Change in the Middle East. Uh, Professor Rabinovich is also co-founder of the Anthropologists for Dialogue on Israel and Palestine. He's also a former president of the Israeli Anthropological Association um, and of Greenpeace Mediterranean and current chairman of the Association for Environmental Justice in Israel. Um, so you're very busy, so we're very honoured and pleased and delighted to have you here with us tonight. And the floor is yours. Thank you, David, Jenna, thank you. and uh, thank you all for attending. I'm really happy to be here this evening. Uh, just as I was preparing for a peaceful summer at the end of the longest year of teaching on Zoom, or lots of courses, came this invitation from Tel Aviv University International to run this course on climate change in the Middle East in the summer program. And um, I'm happy to do it. Uh, it's the first time that this uh, particular course will be uh, taught here at Tel Aviv University, and it is a spin-off in a way of this new book uh, that you can see uh, on my virtual screen, which I published with Stanford University Press only a few months ago. It's called The Power of Deserts, Climate Change, the Middle East, and the Promise of a Post-Oil Era. Um, and uh, the course, uh, as I will be uh, teaching it this summer, uh, will, let me just share this very short presentation with you. Uh, can you see it now? Um, is it visible or not yet? Yes, we can see it. Okay, so the, the course, Climate Change in the Middle East, um, are you at Tel Aviv University calling it a course or a program? Because I sometimes mix the, the, the terms. Is it, a, is it a three credit course or a three credit program? The, it should actually be called a course because it's, okay. a, it's a short term course, but we sometimes right. use the word program interchangeably. Okay. So the course or the program will be running for six weeks uh, from uh, late June to a very early uh, August. So basically for July, with uh, a, a few days before and after. And um, it actually comes in uh, four main parts. The first part will be looking at climate models and climate predictions for MENA stands for Middle East and North Africa. So actually we, we're covering um, a, a larger area, not only the immediate Middle East, but also North Africa. Um, and we will be looking at state of the art predictions and what the future holds uh, from existing uh, climate models. So if you like, this is the more physical science or earth science uh, segment of the course. I myself am a social scientist, but I have also a degree in, 
in a, a BSc degree in, early in my career in environmental studies. So I will also manage these uh, more earth sciences related um, introductory to climate predictions for the Middle East in the first uh, two sessions. Um, sessions um, three to, four, to five will be looking at climate inequality. And there are uh, at least three different types of climate inequality that are true everywhere, but are particularly striking in the Middle East. Uh, inequality in terms of responsibility for the development of the climate crisis, how uh, much CO2 emissions are emitted in particular countries and sometimes by particular populations within countries. That's inequality in responsibility. There is inequality in exposure and vulnerability. Some populations are more vulnerable than others. Uh, this is again, true globally, but most particularly and most striking in the Middle East. And there are also uh, disparities in the commitment of various countries to a global solution. So these three types of inequality will be covered in uh, the, the segment uh, number two. Um, the next segment of the course will be looking at con climate change, conflict and displacement in the Middle East and North Africa, with some emphasis on climate refugees and on the very dangerous and disconcerting chain of events that leads from global warming to food insecurity, large scale evacuation of uh, rural peripheries in the Middle East, sometimes leading to instability, um, forced uh, re uh, relocation, and sometimes conflict, civil war, and mass refugees. Of course, the two emblematic cases of Syria and Sudan, where these chain of events really kicked in in the last decade will be part of the materials that we will cover in the, in the course. And finally, uh, if you like, the more optimistic part of the course will come towards the end when we will be talking about the Middle East and North Africa as part of the solution. As the post oil era is coming fast, uh, oil producing countries, some of them very wealthy, like the six that you see here highlighted in red, are thinking about the day after oil. And uh, since they all have a very powerful solar potential because of their geographical location, and they also have lots of uh, available land because they don't have so much water and lots of capital, um, it makes them into very good candidates for pushing solar energy as a replacement for the kind of prosperity that they have had for the last six or seven decades due to oil. So we will be looking at the possibility of, um, since the global transformation from fossil fuels to, to uh, renewables is already underway, we will be looking at the possibility that the Middle East might have a role in this transformation and maybe even be able to, um, to accelerate it. The course will be running as a mixture of uh, pre-recorded lectures and uh, simultaneous synchronic meetings after each lecture. So students would be requ requested to see the, we, will, we have six weeks for it, so two lessons, two, two sessions per week. Students will be asked to watch the uh, first lecture about 50 or 55 minutes each uh, for the week by uh, Sunday night and then on Monday night, and then we will meet uh, in a synchronic uh, Zoom uh, setting to discuss that first lecture and also to do assignments, to work in little groups, to uh, respond to the main lecture on Tuesday, and then again, watch the next uh, episode uh, by Wednesday night. And then we meet again for about an hour or an hour and 15 minutes on Thursdays. So basically, at, uh, students at their own time will have to watch the, the, the two uh, sessions for the week and then join the synchronic session for, with, with, with everybody else to, to discuss and to, to do some work on, on, on assignments and so on and so forth. Looking forward to as many as possible of you uh, joining us. Happy to be in touch if you want to send me an email or ask some questions now. Um, and otherwise, have a good summer with us or without us.
Wonderful. Thank you so much, Professor Rabinovich. Really appreciate your time and all of that information. Andre looks very excited about the course. So um, I think you've, you've done your job well. Really appreciate your time. And I want to thank all of the panelists who joined us to present about their courses or programs this summer. Um, so I am going I'm just, to- I'm just going to, to put my email address in the chat and then uh, sign off. Uh, so if anybody is interested, I'm here for uh, email exchange. Thank you. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. And that definitely, if anybody who's joined us today is interested in learning more and you don't happen to catch Professor Rabinovich's um, contact information, you can certainly reach out to myself or to David. We'll connect you um, with anybody on campus that we absolutely can and get you the information that you need. Thank you again, Professor Rabinovich. Um, okay, so I am going to continue talking about our summer programs. I'm going to give you guys a little bit more information about what we're offering this summer and um, and what we offer generally at TAU International. Um, so just briefly, um, it started me back at the beginning of the presentation, but like I said, we have a lot of programs available um, during the year, during the summer in a variety of topics. You've heard about a couple of the um, only online courses that we're going to be offering this summer. Um, the applications are still open for these programs. Um, and like I said, we offer a lot. So what, what you can see up on your screen right now, the left-hand column, all of those programs are running this summer. Um, obviously, during a typical year, we have a more robust um, court, or program offering available. You can see on in the right-hand column the programs that we run during a typical year and which we expect to be back hopefully by summer 2022. Um, but there is a lot available right now. There are language programs, um, research programs, and like you just heard, some opportunities to, even if you can't make it to Israel on the ground, um, to participate in what the exciting things that are going on on campus, the research and information, um, even just about COVID-19 um, that's happening in our world. This is something that affects everybody. So uh, we hope that there is something in there that will be of interest to you. Um, I wanna give you a brief kind of overview of what the summer program calendar is gonna look like. Um, so this lists some of the programs you saw on that list before, and it mentions the class start date, the arrival date, if these are courses that are taking place um, hybrid in a hybrid model, um, in person or online. So the one thing that I want to make sure that everybody understands, obviously these programs for the upcoming summer are set to begin in a relatively short amount of time. If they're a completely online course that you're planning to participate remotely, these things may not affect you, but um, it is important if you're planning or hoping to join a program that's taking place on campus, um, that obviously during you know, 2021, during 2020, there are some extra steps to arrival that, that are required. Um, and our team is here to support you and help you through those processes. But it's important to understand that we have to abide by whatever regulations the Ministry of Health in Israel um, is, is laying out for us and for any international travelers. So we will do our best to keep you as updated as possible with up to the minute information. Um, but Again, there is a quarantine requirement for any international traveler coming into Israel, regardless of your vaccination status. So at this point, what arrival looks like is that if you, regardless of your vaccination status, when you arrive to Israel, you have to immediately begin quarantine um, in the dorms that we offer on campus. We have quarantine um, arrangements that can be made and if you have been vaccinated outside of Israel, there is an option for shortening that 14-day quarantine with, by taking a, um, a serological test or an antibody test for COVID. So everybody who arrives to Israel will already be required to have a PCR test, negative results, 72 hours before you land in Israel. 
then you're required to quarantine and either you'll be quarantined for 14 or perhaps slightly less uh, days. So I just wanna make sure that every, and we're pretty upfront about that considering these programs are, are set to begin relatively soon. So if you have questions about what that would look like for you, um, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Our offices, our staff, our team in Israel and around the world are here to help you sort that out and make sure that you're able to, to get the best experience possible. Um, so just briefly, we talked about the programs that are gonna be available online, totally online. Um, we, have, we talked about COVID-19 from crisis to opportunity. We spoke about the climate change course from Professor Rabinovich. There's also a physiology and pathology of post-harvest crops course being offered through um, our, the folks that run our food safety and security programming. Um, so if that's something that interests you, please feel free to let us know and we'll connect you with the, the team from there. That course, from my understanding, and David, you can correct me if I'm wrong, um, is being run on a hybrid model, which means you can participate remotely from your country of origin, um, or you can choose to try and come to Israel and participate in class um, in person. Is that correct? Yeah, you're correct. It's a hybrid option and it will be updated on our website, I think, by tomorrow as well. Wonderful. Wonderful. Um, OK, I, not to beat a dead horse or anything like that. I'm just going to quickly go over some basic stats about these courses. Please keep in mind things like application deadlines and program dates. These courses are going to be instructed in English, of course, um, and they will have interactive, synchronic and asynchronous course um, components. So something to keep in mind. Um, we talked about the climate change in the Middle East course as well. Um, I didn't get a chance to show you, the, show you this slide in advance, so please take note of the application deadline that is different from the COVID-19 course application deadline. Um, you can apply until June 15th. Um, and the, that program will run from the end of June to the beginning of August. Uh, this is just some information about the post-harvest crops course that I mentioned earlier. That application deadline is going to fall a little bit later on June 20th. So again, if you have questions about any of those courses, I will throw up my our contact information at the end of this presentation so you can feel free to reach out to us and we'll do our best to get you as much information as possible. Um, and briefly, getting away from the academic side of what TAU International offers students, I just want to quickly touch on the student life team. I mentioned we have a representative from the student life team joining us. Um, this is a group of um, typically mostly um, students, Israeli students who live on campus, who live in the dorm. Um, and I like to really drive home the point that the student life team is the number one resource for you as a student on campus, as an international student on campus. These are Israeli students who understand how the system works, who are familiar with the, the machine of campus, and they're there to help advise you in a variety of options from being the first folks that welcome you when you arrive, um, they're running orientation, they're, um, they're running arrival, getting you checked into dorms, all those kinds of things. They're doing, they're running trips and activities, excursions throughout Israel, um, providing as many opportunities as we can for you to engage in the culture, you know, a little more uh, outside of the university. Um, I also think it's really important to note that the Madra team, the student life team, are there as, um, you know, also in, in case of an emergency. These are, these are people that you can go to with questions about, heaven forbid, how to use your health insurance if you need medical attention or having a health issue, um, how to help they assist you in issues with housing, um, all that kind of stuff. They're really there to be your first point of contact, your first layer of support. Um, and it's an incredible group of people that I think really make the experience. Um, I myself participated as a graduate student many moons ago um, at, through TAU International. And truly the student life team was the, the, the part of that experience that helped me feel the most grounded when I was there. So. It's really important to highlight that. I also want to make sure to touch on um, accommodations and insurance. Obviously, we provide housing on campus. These are apartment-style dorms. So that means if you um, 
if you're an American student, for instance, like myself, you're used to um, a different type of setup for college dorms. So these are apartment style. You have a full kitchen, a full bathroom um, that you share in an apartment or in a, you're in a studio apartment. But we have, um, my understanding is that there are single bedrooms. So private bedrooms, either in shared apartments or in um, a private space. So this is really great. All of our students are living in the newest kind of dorm complex on campus called Student City, um, the Brochim dorms. And it's such a soft landing for international students. You have everything there you could possibly need, a full grocery store, an aroma cafe, which for folks like myself is very important. Um, there is an ATM and a candy shop and a, you know, a hair salon. Like it's everything that you need. Hopefully, we hope that you will go out and explore a little bit, but you would never have to leave campus if you didn't want to, honestly. So um, on top of that, we provide health insurance. All of our students, the cost of that is covered in the cost of tuition. Um, we have, like I said, resources through the student life team to help you navigate that if need be. Uh, there's a doctor's office on campus. It, it could not be easier. And we will, like I said, our student life team is there to support you in any of those circumstances. Um, so just briefly, I'm gonna put up our email, our general email address, uh, that goes to David and myself and our website. If you have any questions about um, what's available to you this summer, um, please, please feel free to reach out to me. And David, I don't know if there were any questions that came up um, during the chat since I wasn't quite paying attention to that, but if there's anything that came up, please feel free to, to chat that out. Sure. There was a couple, somebody asked questions about summer scholarships and just to let everyone know, we do offer a summer scholarship to um, a couple of our programs. I'll pop in the chat here um, a link to that page. Let me just open it up. Da, da, da. For, the, for Hebrew Alpan, Smart Cities and Advanced English, they're all eligible for our summer scholarship. And I'll pop that link in the chat there. Wonderful. I also understand that if you are an alum of Tel Aviv University International, the COVID-19 course is also being offered um, at a discounted rate. So if you're an alum, there is a special um, opportunity there for you. The same with the climate change one, both of the, the two online oh, ones. Yeah, they're both 50% off for alums. Incredible. Um, and I can okay. see there is a question about the quarantine and vaccination. So I'm just going to briefly touch on that again, and please feel free to chime in if there's anything I'm missing or forgetting to mention. But um, so at this point, unvaccinated students can come. You, you can come to the program. There is a question still about whether or not you'd be able to sit in a classroom on campus mm -hmm. um, without a green pass, which is what Israel is using to kind of identify folks who have been vaccinated and are able to be in you know, more public places and groups of people. So at this point, my understanding is that if you don't have a green pass, you can't be in class um, and that you can only get a green pass if you were vaccinated in Israel. So. Um, there, this is an evolving situation, as I'm sure everybody who's joined us today understands from the last year, is that we can't predict anything. We can tell, do our best to explain to you what the procedure is now um, and you know, let you know that these things are subject to change with an evolving situation. Um, we have to abide by the Ministry of Health regulations and guidelines. So right now, 14 days in advance to quarantine. Yes, that is correct. Um, if you are vaccinated or have had COVID and you have antibodies, you can take an antibody test um, and or serological test and be given permission to exit quarantine slightly early. Um, but that is that is the procedure at this point. Um, and there is obviously an additional fee for quarantine, like as far as housing goes, and there are different it's on a sliding scale as far as um, what level of support in quarantine you'd like to have if you want to be in charge of your own you know food delivery and things like that you can choose to pay a slightly lower fee or you can um, opt to have um, 
as much of that taken care of by the student life team as possible. Um, but yes, that is something to be aware of. It's going to be a requirement and it will also mean that the dates that are set as far as arrival goes on our website are subject to change um, based on arrival necessities. Um, and when it comes to, I just, I saw someone just added a question about insurance. Uh, yes, that is included in the cost of tuition. We always recommend that if you have any um, pre-existing health concerns that you need to have maintained or things like that, you need to always wise to purchase or look into traveler's insurance through your, your country of residence. Um, but again, there is a lot of information on the website about kind of pre-departure things to prepare and our team is always here to help answer questions. Um, and yes, uh, somebody put in, in the, the quote, just to clarify, we, you do need to arrive two weeks before the start date of a program in order to quarantine. Uh, okay, any other questions that I missed anywhere, David? Is there in the chat or the Q&A? No, I think that's most of them you've covered. You've answered this. I also thought I'll pop in the chat, you mentioned this about the, the Broshim dorms. Um, which is the new student city and also I'll put a link here because and on this link you can actually um, do a virtual tour of a couple of the apartments as well. Oh yeah that's a great see. feature I love that. <laughs> and they have great views actually the Broshim dorms are on the top of the hill if you know Tel Aviv you can see the sea you can see the Tel Aviv skyline they're they're very very impressive. They are. Um, we had somebody ask if I'm fully vaccinated in Germany, I still won't be able to join the classes in Israel. Uh, you would be able to join, I mean, yeah. all of the classes that are that are running in a hybrid model, which means there is synchronous teaching happening in a classroom on campus and also um, the courses being offered for participants remotely online. Um, you would still be able to participate remotely. So we had students who are with us over the last year participating in programs that were at some point because of the pandemic and lockdowns and things like that running only online. So students were still able to be in Israel on campus, but they were participating, you know, from places um, like their dorm rooms online uh, participating remotely. Um, and all of our housing at this point, my understanding is that all of the international students are living in the Broshim dorm. Is that correct, David? As far as I'm aware, yes. Yes, yes. it is. So whoever asked about that, please understand if you're aware of the difference between Broshim and Einstein. Broshim is um, built a little more recently and um, we have moved all of our international students into, into that complex. So it's newer, it's a, a little bit nicer their elevators things like that um that make it a little more pushy for our international students um so um someone did ask about the visa um does registration for a summer program guarantee a student visa from israel um and that that question is a little it's a little bit tricky i mean listen the visas are issued by the consulate by the Ministry um, of Israel. And we, there is definitely a different visa process now. So before COVID, all you needed was a visa to come in. Now you need a visa and an entry permit. Um, it's a, a little more, there are a few more hoops to jump through, we'll say. Um, but yes, even for summer programs, you need to have a visa to enter the country. Um, and there are some students who will have issues if you know the consulate that is closest to you is not offering consular services or not taking appointments for visas. And we're trying, doing our best to assist students and advise students on a case by case basis as they try to get entry into the country. It, it is not impossible, but it is not the way it was before. We'll put it that way. Um, cool. And somebody asked about the the Einstein housing. I'm assuming this is the same person. That's just an old form, so please don't please don't worry about that. Um, it says how it says Einstein, but um, international students are housed in Broshim. Um, somebody mentioned asked about um, is it Thaibang? You asked if you're eligible eligible for the scholarship, even if you're not from a TAU partner institution. The actual summer scholarship, the 
Um, it's merit-based and preference is given to students who meet two of the following conditions, cumulative GPA, 3.54, visiting Israel for the first time, or coming from a TAU partner institution. So if you don't, as long as you meet the other two, then I think you would, you would, you would be considered. Mm -hmm. All right, and just to be considerate of time, we're, yeah. we're almost getting to an hour. So if you have any other questions about that are specific to your, you know, process of entering the country or participating and registering for any of the courses we've talked about today, like I said, please feel free to reach out to that study at email address um, and we will get you connected to the right folks if we're not able to answer your questions ourselves. Um, but I do really want to thank everybody, our panelists today who, who joined us. I think our professors may have hopped off because they're all in Israel. I'm just starting my day here in New York. Um, but Andre, again, thank you so much for your insight about the, the online course that you participated in last summer. Um, it sounds like these are really exciting opportunities for anybody to participate in from around the world. So we hope that if you saw something that's interesting to you and exciting to you, you'll reach out to us for more information. Um, and with that, I don't know if anybody else has anything to add, but I'll say thank you to everybody that joined us. Um, again, feel free to reach out to us and I'm sure we'll be in touch with you um, in the days to come. Just want to echo that as well. Thank you so much to everyone that joined us and also to every one of you sitting at home that, that tuned in to watch the webinar. Um, I hope it was informative. A big thank you to Jenna for being the wonderful host um, of our webinar this evening and to the professors and doctors that we had earlier. <laughs> Andre's clapping his hands. Also to you, Andre, for joining us, uh, given your um, experience of the program last year as, as an alum. Um, thank you to everyone. Really appreciate you coming out. And as Jenna said, we've put our email address there. I'll email out this recording to everyone that we invited anyway. So you're all welcome to watch it back at any time. And by all means, do reach out to us with any, any queries or any questions you may have. And we hope right. to see you all in Israel soon. <laughs> yeah. Here's to a great summer 2021, yes. right, guys? I think so. All right. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Jenna. Bye, Thanks, everyone. Isaac. Thanks, Thank Andre. You. Wonderful. All right, I'm just gonna wait for you to stop recording before I oh, take sorry. it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you are.